Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Viper Bites. Right now, we're going through all the training camp battles and all the news and notes that you need to be paying attention to to help you succeed this fantasy football season. Today, we are going to preview and look into the NFC East. And, of course, we are going to start with the New York Giants. Over that stretch. Going to start with a throw and complete to the pro bowler Ingram, who's out across the 35. You know, he's been limited the last couple of starts that he has had, but his legs are such a big weapon for him in this offense. They hand to Gallman some room to run. Sean Lee missed a tackle. Dorrance Armstrong. Bama, Ready! Three tight ends in the game and a handoff to Gallman for a first down and more. Out of the shotgun, quick throw. Pass is caught by Caden Smith. He's got 10. Well, that highlight package is a little bit longer than I remember cutting. So that's probably all the highlights that came from the New York Giants season that was. Now, the one big camp battle that I'm watching right now, what intrigues me, is that slot receiver battle right now. Now, obviously, Kadarius Tony, they drafted in the first round. They kind of made some moves. Maybe not the guy that New York Giants fans wanted, but it's the guy that they're going to get. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. The guy's got some moves. He's got some skills. He's kind of like a jitterbug there. Uh, he has that explosive uh, ability, that versatility that you're looking for, that he can make an impact immediately. However, he is going to start training camp on the IR with a non-football injury. So that's something to keep an eye on in camp right now. And he needs all these reps he can get. Because if we look, we know Kenny galladay has got that one side locked up already. And then you've got a variety of receivers, such as Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, who've been there, done that, have some upside. In theory, I think Sterling Shepard is the guy they would prefer to move to the slot. He was most effective throughout his career in that kind of role. And if the Giants keep him on the outside, then we can look at someone like a, a Kadarius Tony competing for that third right wide receiver role in the slot. They also went out and got John Ross. Can John Ross play consistently in that slot, or is he going to be played on the outside as kind of that field stretcher? That's to be seen. But what does this really mean for Darius Slayton and John Ross? We can kind of make that assumption that they're going to believe in Kadarius Tony. He's going to get some uh, plays designed for him once he's in the lineup. We know Sterling Shepard's probably going to lock down one spot with Kenny Galley. So let's kind of look at this battle here. Shepard, Slayton, and what they did last year. John Ross... He's, he's in that same category for me as Sammy Watkins. Never John Ross. Period. End of discussion. Forget about it. Get him out of there. Sterling Shepard last year, 66 receptions, 656 yards, three touchdowns on 90 targets. So we know he's being looked at by Daniel Jones. as kind of that security blanket um, for the Giants in that passing game. Darius Slayton chipped in with 50 receptions, 751 yards, 96 targets. And here's the kicker, Evan Ingram. Oh, boy. Don't look too close in these stats. 63 receptions on 109 targets. We'll get to that just in a second, but 654 yards, one touchdown, 109 targets and only 63 receptions. Giants fans, I'm not even going to say nothing. You already know where I'm going, so we're going to leave it. Now, when we look at these Giants, I really believe that Darius Slayton is probably going to be the guy who's going to be battling Kadarius Toney for that third wide receiver spot opposite of Kenny Galdi. I think Sterling Shepard is the guy they're going to move into the slot for the most part, maybe get Kadarius Toney bouncing in and out. It's going to be interesting to see that dynamic. Galladay, we know we're going to start him. Now, can Slayton play on the outside, rotate him, Sterling Shepard? Sterling Shepard plays a little bit of slot, bounces to the outside. Kadarius Toney comes to the inside. Toney can do some stuff on the outside. I think he's better off in the slot where also Sterling Shepard's better off. But I think the Giants do believe in Sterling Shepard going forward. And we're going to see Sterling Shepard be that third wide receiver or that second wide receiver option behind Kenny Galladay. Saquon Barkley is coming back. We're going to talk about this running game right now. Now, when I talk about the running game, it's not just about Saquon Barkley. It's about that offensive line as well. And it's about the Giants going out and getting Las Vegas Raiders running back and former Denver Bronco, Devontae Booker, back in March as a backup for uh, Josh Jacobs. He, he uh, had 93 touches, 423 yards, averaged 4.3 yards per carry. We've seen uh, Wayne Gallman last year come in in relief of Saquon Barkley after the injury and had some success, did some good things. Obviously got himself another contract with San Francisco there in the offseason. But behind... 
Booker and Saquon, it gets really slim as far as running backs go. You got Gary uh, Brightwell, the sixth round pick out of the University of Arizona, and they also went off and they signed Corey Clement out of the Philadelphia Eagles there. Not exactly screaming depth, but I think you got to bank on Saquon Barkley being healthy and 100 percent once week one rolls we know he's going to sit back here through training camp he's not going to get a whole lot of reps he's already starting the season on the pop there as is matt pert a guy i really believe in thought he was going to solidify that right tackle spot for the giants but let's look at this giants offensive line while we're at it will hernandez nick gates uh shay lemieux andrew thomas and then we've got that kind of an interesting battle i was going to look forward between uh pert and soldier going into this season to see what's going to happen we know when we take a look at this uh that andrew thomas took a lot of the reps exclusively uh in otas and mandatory minicamp but how is this going to affect the right side and pert last season kind of rotated in at both tackle positions we know he's got that versatility he's got the ability to play left tackle right tackle if he can get back in the lineup which now i'm kind of more confused more now than ever but We'll see how it goes. Uh, Pert surrendered only two sacks, nine pressures, 84 pass on those 84 pass rush stats, according to Pro Football Focus. Now, he entered the camp. We haven't got there yet, but he entered as kind of having a solid foot long, holding off Soldier. But now Soldier's going to have a chance of reclaiming stake on that right tackle role in that starting lineup. But he seriously needs to show some improvement on what was a very disappointing 2019 season. So the longer that Matt Pert sits out, then the greater the chance that Soldier Nate Soldier is able to get himself back into condition and make a play for that right tackle spot. So let's see how this plays out going forward. Now we're going to head over to the nation's capital. Not my nation's capital because I'm up here in Canada, but to your nation's capital down in the States. We're going to go to the Washington Football Club in... And on first down, Smith looking to throw it and does so over the middle where he's got a completion to who else? Terry, a third and long. It's a four-man rush. Smith can't find anyone. Dancing away from trouble. Now gets it out into the flat. Still work to do for Sims. Roethlisberger looking, looking, throwing. He's got a completion. No incompletes. The offense has been better with him in there. Three and out on the first possession. Here is Gibson. Good run. Antonio Gibson. First down and more. All oh, he's there. You have it. The Washington Football Club. We saw some highlights there. A little Alex Smith sprinkled in. Alex Smith. We salute you. Heading off into the sunset. Came back on his terms. Made a comeback. Got in the game. Comeback player of the year. Probably the greatest story we'll ever see as far as a return to action goes. Now the Washington Football Club went out and made some moves. To help this offense, particularly in the signing of Curtis Samuel, bringing him over from the Carolina Panthers to kind of help solidify that opposite spot, opposite of Terry McLaren. But they also went up and drafted themselves Diami Brown out of the University of North Carolina. I love myself some Diami Brown. The guy is explosive. At Carolina, two seasons, 106 receptions, 2,145 yards, 20 touchdowns, and he averaged over. 20 yards per reception. You put that opposite of Terry McLaren, and you've got yourself a big play waiting to happen every single time. We know Diami Brown is going to see a lot of single coverage because all that attention is going to be focused on over on Terry McLaren, and rightfully so. And I still think Terry McLaren has some serious appeal no matter what. You're looking at him as a wide receiver one. Diami Brown played a little bit with Daz Newsome there, with kind of a 1A, 1B in the receiving game. He knows how to make the most out of his targets. Now, we know Curtis Samuel is going to have that slot roll down, a little bit of a, a gadget kind of guy. I think Diami Brown is going to line up on the opposite side of Terry McLaren. You've got yourself a solid three-man crew there. Where I'm interested in here now is that battle for that fourth wide receiver spot. Early indications are Cam Sims will hold down that spot, but the real battle is going to come down to Kevin Harmon. If we ever get a good look at Kevin Harmon and, or Kevin Harmon and see what he can do with the Washington Redskins and the passing game, I will be surprised. And they all also got the Gandy man there, Antonio Gandy Golden out of Liberty. Both are former draft picks. Neither have really got onto the field to show what they can do yet. That's going to be a battle to watch throughout the camp. And can Isaiah Wright slide in there for that wide receiver four spot? Stay tuned. If I was a betting man on that wide receiver four, I'm going with the Gandy man because the Gandy man can, if you know what I'm saying. Another battle to watch in Washington 
is that battle for the safety position. Actually, both safety positions are open, but the one I really want to look at is Landon Collins versus Cameron Curl. Now, what this is, Landon Collins got hurt last year. Typically, you don't lose your position due to injury, but Cameron Curl came on. He played well. Uh, if you look at the numbers that Curl was able to put up last year in 11 games, in which he only started, or he started 11 games, pardon me, in the of 16, and he was able to put up 88 tackles, 63, 63 of those were of the solo variety, three interceptions, two sacks, four passes defended. That's pretty good for in 11-game stint. Landon Collins on his career, 81 games, 595 tackles, 431 of those of solo, nine interceptions, seven sacks, and 37 passes defended. You look at these numbers, Cameron Curl could be the next Landon Collins based on what we were able to see last year. Now, we know Collins ain't going to give up the position, but can we see either Curl or Collins, whoever loses this battle, kind of move into that wheel linebacker position for the Redskins? Or, sorry, oh, there, I just did it. The Washington Football Club, my apologies. So that's going to be one of those battles. I'm interested to see how Landon Collins, Cameron Curl, how that dynamic works, and if one of them moves into that wheel linebacker position for the Washington football team. Now we got to head over to the city of brotherly love where the Philadelphia Eagles have done a little bit of work here in the offseason. Got pressure to continue for Baltimore. Jalen Hurts is in there and trying to create something, and he does. By far the best offensive play of the day for Hurts. <laughs> Throws it deep. And it is caught by Raker. Yeah, and I think right now it's just to jumpstart your team. You just weren't doing anything. And with an offensive line that's not playing great, you know, you, you see what he can provide right there. He's able to get out. To the end zone. Touchdown! See? You see it right there. There is video proof that Jalen Rager can ball out. He just needs that opportunity to do so. We're not going to focus on that wide receiver uh, conundrum there. We know Devonta Smith was brought in through the draft. Jalen Rager's already there. It's going to be interesting uh, to see how that shakes out. Recently, we just heard that the Eagles are big players, potentially, for Deshaun Watson. What kind of dynamic does that mean? Does that mean that Hurts possibly heads to Houston? I'm not too sure if that's going to happen or not. But it was kind of an interesting thing that kind of came down in recent days of the possibility of Deshaun Watson and the Eagles becoming an item. But I don't want to go there. I want to get a little bit, oh, let's go a little riskier here with the camp battle. Let's talk Kirion Johnson and Jordan Howard in that bubble watch. I, I'm surprised that either one of these guys were brought in. I would be surprised if either of them, if they both stayed on the roster, let alone one or the other. It doesn't feel like both running backs make this roster because they're very similar, including their injury history. Uh, Johnson's proven to be a better pass catcher, but you look at these pass catchers already in the Eagles' backfield with Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, Kenny Gainwell is there. It's a crowded backfield. Not to mention, why why are they signing Adrian Killens in there and then or Jason Huntley or Elijah Holyfield? These are some – all these names are in this Eagles' backfield. I think they're – trying to running back by committee kind of approach. Okay, we got Miles Sanders. We got Boston Scott's that change of pace guy. We got Kenny Gainwell to kind of fill in for Miles Sanders if something goes wrong. We need that bruising back. Who's that back going to be? Short yardage that we can kind of pound in there, use them, abuse them, so to speak. I don't know if that's Kirion Johnson. I think I could be Jordan Howard. I don't know how this is going to go. It really it is a baffling situation to me. But I can tell you what, there's going to be some interesting cuts here with Jason Huntley and Elijah Holyfield and Mike Pena are both gone. Unless they can somehow bring them on the practice roster. I'm not too sure how capology works. That's what I got my boy Waltner for, but something to keep an eye on. But even more so important in the backfield is how that offensive line is going to hold up in 2021. Man, this was one of those teams that was absolutely devastated by injuries. They were even devastated before the season even began. Um in 2020 they had 10 different line combinations and even before that season began the eagles lost brandon brooks who tore his achilles back in june then andre dillier tore his bicep in august so before the season even began they already lost two-fifths of that offensive line so they've only had three starters so to speak going into 2020 i know we kind of put a lot of blame on carson wentz and 
what he wasn't able to do for the Eagles. But you got to keep in mind, he was probably hearing footsteps all season long. Ten different offensive line combinations, two starters off the books before the season even began. That's enough to kind of get in your head before the season begins. Now, Rose been traded up in the first round to draft Dilliard back in 2019. The other guy I'm looking for this position here on the line is Jordan Melada, uh, the rugby star, the seventh round pick in 2018. Uh, the offensive line coach here, Jeff Stutland, already made the uh, claim that the best player will win this job. He also said that whoever has the most value will win. How, how you want to read that, I don't know. You take a look at it. Dilliard is a pretty much just a left tackle and left tackle only. Uh, Malata can play both tackles uh, positions. You got a little bit more of a draft capital invested in Andre Dilliard, but you got more value, in my opinion, on a tackle who can swing on both sides. So, who's the best player? Who's got the most value? That's to be seen. I still think that Andre Dillard is the guy there to help solidify that line right now, uh, opposite uh, tackle from Lane Johnson. And they kind of will be able to bring in um, Jordan Malata as needed because I still think between Lane Johnson and Andre Dillard, I don't think either one of them plays all 17 games in 2021, which is going to be key because they need to get that game going. They need to get the running game going. If they want Jalen Hurts, if he is the guy, then they need to make sure he's protected a little bit. So let's see how they can solidify that. Bets on Andre Dillard. Now, Everything's bigger in Dallas. We know Jerry Jones will do just about anything. Actually, I think he pretty much said he would do anything. I think he said he would sell his soul, basically, for the Dallas Cowboys to win another championship. So let's head to Dallas and see what we got there. Second and 10 now for Prescott. Able to get away from the pressure, direct traffic, and in stride, go to play Jarwin. And Jarwin takes it all the way in. 42-yard touchdown as Prescott extended and Jarwin scored. Dak is back, back again with his weapons, slinging it around the yard. I got nothing after that. You know I can't spit no lyrics. But Dak Prescott is back. That's a huge boost for this passing game. I think they have an opportunity to have three 1,000-yard receivers in Cooper, Lamb, and Gallup. I think that's a very strong possibility. They flirted with it in the past. Um, this combination's flirted with it. At Randall Cobb, when he was there, he flirted with uh, 1,000 yards. I think he was about 850, give or take. So we know they have the ability to have three 1,000-yard receivers. Dak Prescott was doing unreal before his untimely injury last year. Ezekiel Elliott looks like he's in better shape than ever coming into camp. And Blake Jarwin is back. And I know he's a fan favorite of Twitter and everything else, but he's going to be in a battle with Dalton Schultz going in. Dalton Schultz's best benefit is the fact that he's a superior blocker and he brings stability to that unit. Especially when you're coming off an ankle injury, I want to see Dak, how he's feeling, how comfortable he feels back there, where that trust is. And we see Tyron Smith, he's come back. He looks like a freak of nature that he is. He looks like he's 100% on that offensive line. So I, I think Dak's going to be comfortable. I don't think Dalton Schultz has that value that we would hope he would have based on opportunity. So, but Blake Jarwin coming back is huge because he is the best playmaker of the bunch. He can attack the seams. He can get up there in a hurry. And he's definitely the better pass catcher of the two. So money, Blake Jarwin off the get-go. Unless wheels fall off, Dalton Schultz comes in due to injury. But that's the only way I see Schultz passing on Jarwin here. So Jarwin's the guy you got to get. You want him. I think he's going to have a good season. I think he's a solid tight end too in your fantasy rosters. Uh, tight end premium, I think he could be a good guy to kind of pop into a lineup if you are down due to bye weeks and whatnot. So Jarwin's definitely a guy who can have value on your rosters, just like he's got value on the Dallas Cowboys roster. Now, the thing that I love most, and we got to get some IDP in here because uh, most of our shows have a little bit of IDP content to it. we got to talk about that linebacker, I want to call it the linebacker three spot, but it could really be the linebacker two. We don't know how it shapes out. We know Jalen Smith has one spot locked down. There's a very good chance that Leighton Van Der Esch has a second spot locked down, but he's got a history of injuries that could change things pretty quickly. So where it gets interesting, we'll call it the third linebacker spot, the will linebacker, if you will, and how that, that's going to come down to a guy like rookie Micah Parsons, uh, who's going to be figured in to be used a ton this year. He's a great off-the-ball off the linebacker. He comes in off the edge. 
You're going to be able to blitz him. You're going to be able to drop him in coverage. He's got the ability to do a little bit of anything. We should expect him to bounce around his rookie season, play both sides, maybe come um, line up at the defensive end position. So we'll see how that off that defensive line factors him into the equation as well as how he's coming off the ball at the outside linebacker spot. Now, he's not the only linebacker that you're looking at because Keanu Neal figures to be in the linebacking core rather than a safety. He came over from the Atlanta Falcons last year, a Dan Quinn kind of guy. He, I would expect him to get a good chunk of the will snaps throughout the camp right now. And he might even be in competition with Leighton Van Der Esch. If they really believe in Micah Parsons making this roster, or not making this roster, he's already on the roster, uh, getting him a starting role, the real battle could be between Keanu Neal and Leighton Van Der Esch to see who's in there as well. So that's where it's going to get very interesting. We know the familiarity between Ken O'Neill and Dan Quinn. We know he's a favorite, and that's why the Dallas Cowboys signed him pretty quickly when the free agency opened. Another guy to keep watch on is Jabril Cox at LSU via North Dakota. Uh, my boy Eric, he's a big fan. Uh, he might be the best option as far as coverage goes, and so we'll see how the Dallas schemes ways to get him on the field, but he's a great stash for next year. Guy you're probably sitting on the waiver wire or he was drafted late in rookie drafts. You could probably get him on the cheap. Get him now before that value rises as the season goes on. With that said, this has been our look at the NFC East. Stick around. we got more previews, more training camp battles. we got it all. We're going to be talking about it a little bit later. But we're at that 21-minute mark right now. So thanks again for tuning in and stay safe. Here we go. The NFL season, it's almost here. <laughs>